scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Ephesians 6, 11. Does Satan have an operational system? Yes, sir. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. The word wiles there is the word schemes or devices. The wiles of the devil. Schemes of the devil. So Satan does not just attack. There is a system. There is a game plan. There is a destruction plan. He does not just stand up and move around and say, how do I destroy this family? There is a plan. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's read together if you can see it projected. One to read. Lest Satan should gain an advantage of us. Uh -huh. For we are not ignorant of his devices. 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 Strategies. Now, please pay very close attention. Let's identify from scripture some of the things that Satan and demons are involved with. We are looking from the lens of scripture now. We want to examine a few activities of Satan and demon spirits. The activities help us reveal the structure. Are we together? I mean the, the operation now. When you look at what Satan does, you also find in what he does, how he does it. Are we learning? I'll be giving you a few scriptures. Number one, Satan and demons fight. Write it down. The Bible shows us that Satan and even demon spirits, that they fight. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible says, the dragon fought and his angels fought. So it is part of Satan's character and it is part of Satan's modus operandi to fight. Two, Satan hinders or he resists. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Satan resists. Demons resist. He says, wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Who hindered them? Satan, a spirit, can hinder men. If Satan can hinder an apostle, it means he can try to hinder breakthrough, he can try to hinder lifting, Anything that is coming to you for your advantage, it is possible for Satan to try to hinder it. Number three, Satan and demons also, they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10.10 10. Everything that applies to Satan also applies to demon spirits. Satan and indeed demon spirits kill they steal, they kill, and they destroy. John 10, 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, 
most serious armed robbers go in groups are we together when they want to rob say a bank you don't find an individual no matter how strong it's usually a coordinated activity the bible says he cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy so satan steals what does he steal anything at all what does he kill everyone and everything next activity that reveals the modus operandi of satan are you ready satan and demons lie start that one john okay let me give you one more scripture about stealing killing and destroying matthew chapter 13 and verse 19 please write it down matthew 13 and verse 19 the bible lets us know that satan is a thief jesus was teaching this in the parable of the sower when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not he says then cometh the wicked one another word for satan and catcheth away that which, which was sown in his heart can we imagine how satan steals he can steal and even enter your heart your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it satan can enter and steal or your spirit or whatever it is he can steal anything no wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery no wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good but in the name of jesus christ he's finally meeting his resistance forever yeah. next point satan and demons lie john 8 44 satan by his consistency of lying and himself a title that Jesus himself acknowledged as the father you are of your father the devil and the lust of your father the lust of your father ye will do for he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he is in his default state that means when satan feels a lie there's no point feeling guilty that's who he is there are yoruba people who speak yoruba and english and hausa and other tribes but when you are speaking your local dialect you speak it with confidence and joy here's what the bible is telling you you ever doubted satan's language what tribe is he that's it right there the bible says that satan when he speaketh a lie jesus is talking now he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it the word father there is the same word that is used towards god abba an originator and a defender of a cause that means you it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains ah. <laughs> The father of lies. I told you to start that one. You will soon know why. Next point, very quickly. Satan is a master of falsehood. He disguises himself. He uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood. The strategy of disguise or falsehood. second corinthians 11 and verse 14 satan disguises himself are you ready and no marvel he says for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light one of the strategies of satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood he can disguise himself next satan deceives start that one please satan deceives we're studying the modus operandi of satan satan deceives second corinthians 11 and verse 3 satan deceives he's a master deceiver 
are you learning tonight but i fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve the word there is deceived he beguiled eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ you know what paul is saying paul is saying that satan employed a strategy and deceived eve you know i taught you that um adam was not deceived adam fell because of love it was eve that was deceived are we together absolutely it's in your bible we're going to read that there is adam was not deceived it was eve that fell eve was deceived and adam followed her because he loved her the second adam who is jesus was he deceived he came willingly because he loved his eve the church the same pattern you see so adam adam was not deceived it was eve that was deceived no 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 it doesn't listen listen this i i already know i know what is in your heart and okay let me show you first timothy 2, 2 and verse 14. if you think first timothy 2 14 14. first timothy 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? The in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We're discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. Yeah. Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are we learning? Revelations 12 and verse 9. One last scripture that talks about the extent of his deception. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world can you imagine that he deceives the finally we see from scripture that satan is an accuser the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he does not just accuse anyhow he looks for brethren the accuser of the brethren We're identifying some of the activities of Satan and demons to be able to help us to piece out by the intelligence of the spirit a modus operandi, a structure. Now please write this. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception of all the strategies and operations of Satan the most pronounced in the Bible is deception can you imagine that that of the many strategies that we see that Satan deploys the most pronounced based on Scripture is deception please say deception one more time say deception write this down what does it mean to deceive we are now building an understanding on the operation of satan demons and the dark kingdom what does it mean to deceive are you ready to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma 
usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. I'll take it again. To deceive means to deliberately, underline the word deliberately, please. To deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. To deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true. Comma, usually for personal gain or to take advantage of. We're defining deception now. That to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie. It's not true. For your personal gain, the gain of the deceiver, or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived. Of all the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them. Lest Satan should take advantage of us because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver and that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true. Powerful. Write this down. Are you learning? Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood. I want to define it for you now. Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood, is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, comma, hide the truth, comma, or promote a false belief or idea. I'll take it again. Deception, which is the same thing as falsehood, Deception is a statement or action, is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, comma, hide the truth, comma, or promote a false belief or idea. That's the definition of deception. A statement or action that is intended to mislead hide the truth or promote a false belief or idea full stop you may want to add this it is often done for personal gain deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead hide the truth Promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. It is often done for personal gain. Isn't this powerful? That the chiefest strategy of Satan, as far as carrying out his agenda is, in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture, that the greatest and the most pronounced is deception. Write this down, please, about deception. Very important point. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Wow. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. It's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth. Because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth. That means for you to be a deceiver, the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth. Deception cannot happen until the deceiver, in this case Satan, is aware of the truth. So is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is Lord? Is it true that, Jesus, that Satan knows that there is victory given to the saints? Is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved? 
is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life is it true that Satan knows that Jesus gave us the authority over him no wonder he does his ministry of deception so well because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth is someone learning now it is important for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance because a deceiver the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally are we learning now let's take a structured biblical study i wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception but we'll jump it for the sake of time i want us to take one case study we are studying now how satan operates are you ready we want to take one bible story and then we'll examine it closely and i taught you here that theologically speaking there is what we call the law of first mention that every time you want to study a subject a thought or an idea your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage that becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used is that true so we'll go to genesis but before then let's look at two or three scriptures john 8 44 john 8 44 let's start from where we left off jesus is speaking now and jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do he was a murderer when he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth do you know what this means jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth he says he refused to abide to live in the truth he willfully came out of that realm of truth he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it keep that scripture second corinthians 11 3 second corinthians 11 3 but i fear apostle paul is speaking to the church in corinth lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve so apostle paul here is using a story to show us the deception of satan are you seeing where paul is leading us to now Paul is saying, if you want to study the deception of Satan, study what happened with Satan and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Because he's saying Satan will still use that strategy against you. Are you seeing now? He's saying just as Satan beguiled Eve through subtlety, he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he worked with Eve. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying when it has to do with that strategy, it is his master strategy he will not change it you study satan's operation by studying what happened between him and eve first timothy 2 and verse 13 where you read and laughed now i hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now for adam was first formed then eve do we believe this verse 14 and adam was not deceived but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, when you read this, you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes. The Bible is written in summary. And so it does not give us the, the depth of the discussion. Because this is not just something that happened within minutes. I told you that in studying scripture, you have to use the mind 
of literature you have to use the mind of a historian you have to use the mind of an archaeologist and then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man these are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture if all you have is the mind of a spiritual man as powerful as that is you will not really understand the bible because the bible has a literature component the bible has a historical component the bible has an archaeological component and then it has largely a spiritual component are we learning now watch carefully please we are studying satan now and he said unto the woman yea had god said ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden now please listen carefully Go back to verse 1. Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden, it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve are spirits, had dominion but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden adam and man was head over her are we together now and satan would not come directly and attack the head but he knew that there was a connection between adam and eve there was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive adam but he knew that based on that structure there is a connection between Adam and Eve and the connection is love and that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice so he didn't need to deal with the man he was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall so he didn't have to waste his time there <laughs> are you getting the idea now that if I can get Eve you will be seeing it that when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it at that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. The Bible says Satan came and met the woman. <clears throat> now watch this notice the first thing his conversation with the woman yea had god said can you imagine the beginning of his discussion mentioned god satan look at the structure of his deception had god said that means i told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known are you seeing the pattern here now satan wanted all i need to know is what god told you that is the raw material for my fabricating my deception that means satan has no business coming to your life until god speaks the moment god speaks satan says now i have something to work with what did god tell you about your child what did god tell you about your destiny what did god tell you about your ministry deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth in this case what god said because everything god says is yea and amen let god be true and all men liars are we learning and he said unto the woman yea hath god said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of eden are you noticing that there's something with that statement he was doing something to the truth when i tell you truth can kill believe me it's not only a lie that kills he did something that forced her to defend what god said now the woman verse 2 the woman said satan you didn't get that right let me correct you this is what he said we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden and he was listening but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god had said ye shall not eat it neither shall ye touch it 
lest ye die. Satan said, thank you. Now, let me show you that I have an advantage of age over you. Verse 4. Do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. Are we learning how Satan operates now? When Satan comes to you, the raw material for his attack is what God has said. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Are you seeing now? Verse, do you know what he was doing to her here? He was shaking the basis for her obedience. That means now that I know what God has said, I know that faith is obedience. My next assignment is to do something to you. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as the gods, knowing good and evil. Satan was saying God is so insecure. There is something he's hiding from you. And that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule. Don't mind him. Trust me, there is something I know. When you eat this, your eyes will be opened and you will be like him, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. When the woman saw. Everybody say, when the woman saw. Hmm. The discussion started by saying, but by the time we get to this point, she has perceived saw there does not just mean eyes she has conceived as a reality the woman did not fall by eating the fruit eating the fruit was proof she had fallen this was where the fall started perception don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her no that's why i told you the bible is written in summary you you need to use you don't come like that in one day and convince someone go and read your bible the Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. How many times did she come to him? Frequently. J Judas Iscariot. It was not just once they met him and said, deceive, deceive Jesus. It's within the character of Satan to be consistent. The same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say, marry me. And then you have to come. Again. That structure. Satan was patient and came. And he said... When the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the... That's not normal seeing, my brothers and sisters. Mm -mm. There is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit. Are we together? The Bible says the tree to be desired. Look at all this, look at these emotional expressions. It's more than just seeing a tree. She was always looking at the tree. What did she now see? The Bible says she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Maybe in another time as God helps us, I will really explain to you what it really means, the concept of the tree and the fruit. But so that I don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing, we'll just accept it as eating. But you see, the concept of eating and the tree, these are, these are prophetic expressions. It may not necessarily mean tree and fruit, but it does not interrupt our understanding, even if we understand it that way. So we'll continue. The Bible says she did eat. Please, everybody, read the remaining part and gave also unto her husband with her is it in your bible what did he do did he throw it she ate now watch what happened do you know that when she ate there was no effect it was when he ate that something happened Because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd. She ate and she gave him. Ate from deception, he ate from love. In any case, they ate. That's the bottom line. 
and then the bible says the moment that happened notice satan stopped talking to them it was over you thought that after eating you say now how do you feel that is the structure of deception now that he had achieved his goal he will now leave them with god and he says now off i go the bible says the eyes of them were open did he tell them something like that will happen absolutely he said your eye will open but they did not understand what he meant the bible says and they knew now notice what happened here there was already a disruption in the way god arranged the spirit of a man because the way god designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of god the body would barely be an instrument of execution are we together the mind that consists of the will the emotion and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body these are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body and now we see that something is wrong you can see that the soul came alive the eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked you see shame attributes of emotions they sowed fig leaves and made aprons they ran away God is about to speak and they had the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves everybody say fear they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Should you run away from the presence of the Lord? But now we see something happening to them. Are you seeing the way Satan works? He did not have to keep talking. The destruction can happen whether he's there or not. It's a programming. He has done something to them. The same way Satan can come and do something to a village. And after 30 years, it is still working, whether he supervises or not. It's like a software. Now, he left these people. The next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question God asked him. Left the woman. Deception. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? when he came he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman when he came he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion adam you are the one i put alongside your wife what has happened i look spiritually and i don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again when he said adam where art thou god god speaks spiritually there was a position that you could see you could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there. It is that same position that the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. When we look in the spirit, we all those who have dominion, we see that position. Where are you? Adam, where are you? You are lost. Adam. Who shifted you without pushing you? Who shifted you? Who, who gained mastery over you and made you to move? Fear off. You left the place of power and yet force was not used on you. That is the power of deception. Hmm. I overcame. Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Listen. Are you seeing what Satan did? They thought it was just a conversation. They did not understand the spiritual implication. Adam, I checked the place of authority and you are not there. Where are you? This is a tragedy that came upon men. You need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing. Remember the structure. What did God say? 
God did not mean what he will say and he will keep coming to you every day he knows that persistence is powerful Satan does not speak once let me tell you how he speaks he uses words he uses men he uses things he uses pain he's still the one speaking he will employ everything until he shifts you from that place there is a place where when you stand Adam now let me teach you something powerful for as long as man did not cooperate with Satan Satan looked powerless he was with them and could not touch them he was with them and could not touch them the power of Satan is in your falling for his deception there was absolutely nothing he could do to Adam and Eve the best he could do was speak he had to depend on their seeing and their participating with his lies And the Lord told him, where are you? Verse 10. Here's what Adam said. I heard your voice in the garden, but I was afraid. Something has happened to me. I heard your voice clearly. I've not lost my hearing, but I've lost my position. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you know what that means? The glory and the Shekinah that covers me has left. Something has happened to me. And I hid myself because I know what it means to not be covered by your glory. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Every time God comes to rescue you, the first question is who told you? You have opened up your ears to another influence. That means in any case, whether you are restored or you are deceived, it is based on what you were told. Now understand the power of words. No, Adam, you've fallen. Who told you? I'm tracing the root cause of your problem. It came from information. Listen carefully. Dear father, dear grandfather, dear region, where did this witchcraft come from it was not from the shrine it came from who told you someone called you and said there is a way we make money in nigeria you cannot just make money like that let me tell you sincerely if it's money you want to make there is one man you say no 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 let me think about it what is what was happening to eve is happening to you when Satan uses that man, do you see that that was the same thing that happened with Jesus? Satan came to Jesus directly. That was the last time he would come directly. The next time he used the emotion of Peter, then he used Judas. In any case, he felt he got him. Who told you that you were naked? Have you participated with what you heard? Did you do something about what you heard? Because every word we hear does not profit us if we don't mix it with faith. No matter what it is that you hear, if you have not mixed it with faith, the Bible says it will not profit those who hear it. So if Satan says kill yourself, it remains as a thought for as long as you don't act on it. Wow! If you wake up from a dream, and in that dream you see an accident and all of a sudden you allow fear and you start thinking that is satan speaking so this is how i would die you are receiving it you may not know you don't receive by your hands alone the principal way of receiving is your mind you only have with your hand you receive with your spirit you receive with your mind Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? The first demonstration of irresponsibility as recorded in the Bible. Are you ready? And the man said, the woman. Is that the answer? Adam 
have you eaten of the tree yes or no what was his answer the woman he's showing you this is the first expression of the weakness that is in humans that we are usually comfortable transferring blames it is not natural for men to take responsibility by men here is genderless humans Adam have you eaten of this the woman that you gave me to be with me look at this description not longer the woman I love not longer the one we strolled in the garden together with the woman that you gave me to be with me in other words it's not my fault if I were alone no way Satan will not get me I know you are laughing but you understand what God is teaching us here the family I came from is why things are happening like that that's the same answer you are giving why are you not rising because we come from a family of idol worship that's not the answer I know you can laugh at Eve but we are learning now that many of us have been making the same thing and for as long as your answer seeks to transfer blame salvation will be far from you are, are we learning now this is a powerful spiritual concept two men were hanging on the cross with Jesus Christ one of them the Bible called them thieves and one of them was quarreling Jesus paraphrasing shame on you we're on the cross you're on the cross you can't save us the other one said we are sinners this man is righteous Jesus looked at one and said today you will be with me in paradise what happened to the other one now watch this I'm showing you how Satan how man transferred the dominion to Satan watch how it happened now every time you pass blame on anything you also give that thing authority over you it's a spiritual principle let me repeat myself again every time you pass blame on anyone or anything you give that thing authority over you blaming situations and circumstances for your life is giving them authority over you no matter how legitimate you think it is the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she did give me of the tree and I did eat he did not answer I did eat alone he had to tie someone else to cushion his guilt and he said yes I ate but hold on hold on the woman that you gave me is the cause for it now are you seeing that on legal basis God could now talk to the woman because Satan has handed over responsibility to her and the Lord said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done sadly she made the same mistake and the woman said Satan the serpent beguiled me and I did it what is this that you have done the serpent beguiled me and I did it verse 14 he goes to Satan and the Lord God said to the serpent because thou hast done this thou art caused above all cattle and above all beasts of the field upon thy belly shall thou go and thus shall thou eat all the days of your life verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel there's no time to now begin to teach you all these things he says to the woman he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow shall thou bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee 17 and unto Adam he said because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife you see now you heard the voice of your wife and you have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee saying thou shalt not eat cost is the ground the ground is anywhere you sow cost is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life 18 thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto you and thou shalt eat of the herb in the field 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground for out of it was thou taken 
and dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return let's stop there what do we have to learn from this number one lesson number one understanding the operation of satan especially his deceptive nature which is his strongest point over the saints number one i told you that deception cannot happen until there is the awareness of the truth do you know what that means everything god tells you by speaking to you or by his word guard it carefully because somebody is coming there that adversary is coming to vet what god has told you when satan comes to you his primary assignment is to find out what god said because everything god said represents where he's taking you to lesson number two are you ready now guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life guard your ear gate guard your eye gate because these are the principal channels through which satan speaks can i tell you this if you think satan will always appear to you and talk to you it may not always happen like that but he will use your ear gate he will use your eye gate because these are the principal gates to your mind very soon you understand what paul was teaching in his Pauline epistle is God helping us tonight number three faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and understanding it is not just faith towards God comes by hearing the Word of God but faith towards anything comes by hearing the word of that thing faith towards destruction comes by hearing the word that makes for destruction faith towards failure comes by hearing the word that leads to failure and hearing again until it crystallizes in your heart satan is a master of deception he uses the word of god to shift you away from your zone of safety from your zone of power from your zone of defense but in the name of Jesus with this spiritual understanding someone is gaining momentum and is gaining power to shake off everything that is an arsenal of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ write this down very quickly levels of satanic influences very powerful truth you're about to learn there are three levels of satanic influences over the saints as revealed from scripture. Three levels, principally. Number one, are you ready? Number one is called witchcraft. The first level of satanic influence over the saints is called witchcraft. Galatians chapter 3, please, and verse 1. Let's hurry up for sake of time. Galatians 3 verse 1 all foolish Galatians he says who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus had been seen evidently set forth crucified among you now please look up the Bible's idea of witchcraft is not drinking blood and eating flesh those are just extended meanings the Bible's idea of witchcraft is not going to a coven in the night and having a meeting. I'm not negating those things, but I'm telling you that the standard definition of witchcraft from the Bible has nothing to do with any of these things. Witchcraft, according to Bible definition, is anything that can cause you to err using the tool of deception. That is witchcraft. Causing a man to err, causing a man to go out of alignment using the tool of deception is the Bible's definition of witchcraft. The first way that Satan influences men is through witchcraft. That means he uses the tool of deception to cause you 
to air. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, commit the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Notice every time there is witchcraft, you see that there is deviation from the truth. There is disobedience in it. What is witchcraft? I wrote here to cause you to think, to act, and to talk in error using the tool of deception. What is witchcraft again? To cause you to think, to cause you to act, and to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception. Second Peter chapter 2, we'll read from verse 1 and 2. Second Peter chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Very quickly. But there are false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Last verse, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of. This is the character of witchcraft. The practice of witchcraft does not have to do with some crude African type activity, even though there is an expression of it like that. But principally, engaging the tool of deception to cause you to think, to act, and to speak in ways that are inconsistent with God's ways is witchcraft. So the first demonic influence that Satan has over men, if allowed, is witchcraft. Number two, are you ready? The second is called manipulation and control of your mind. Manipulation and control of your mind. Please start that one because this is where even when you are saved, I'm going to be answering the question whether the Christians can be possessed or not. Manipulation and control of your mind. This one is principally in the realm of the mind. Your mind containing your will, your emotions, and your intellect. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 22 and 23. Matthew 16, 22 and 23. Remember the discussion between Jesus and Peter? Jesus was talking about his dying. And the Bible says Peter took him. Who took him? Peter, one of the chief disciples of Jesus. He took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not happen to you. 23. But he turned, he being Jesus, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou serverest not the things that be of God and those that be of men. You want to find the account that he said Satan has desired to sift you, go to Luke 22. We'll read 31 and 32. Synoptic account, same message. The Lord said, Luke 22, 31 and 32. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Satan came to manipulate the compassion, like I've taught you, of Peter to stop Jesus from dying. Jesus was talking about his death. And to Peter, he did not know. This was a man who he was not long after, I mean, that he had said, I know who thou art. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Next moment, Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Satan. Number three, the third level of satanic influence. The third level of satanic influence over the saints is called 
possession or over men really possession this talks of complete influence and control of your spirit mind and body possession complete influence and control of your spirit your mind and your body demons can use satan can use witchcraft next level manipulation and control of your mind third level complete possession influence and control of your spirit your mind your mental faculties and your body mark chapter 5 mark chapter 5 and they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the gatherings let's follow closely now he's teaching us that it is possible for demons to completely possess a man and when he was come out of the ship immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tomb. Are you seeing the character of that man now? And no man could bind him. Unusual power. No, not with chains. Verse 4. Because that when he had often, when he had been often bound with fetters and chains, the chains had been plucked asunder by him. Can a normal man easily do that? You see that now and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs doing what crying and cutting himself with stones this is the standard character of demonic possession that this man is hurting himself with stones and yet he cannot stop because his spirit his mental faculties and sadly his body is under total control and influence of such a spirit when jesus saw when he saw jesus afar off we're about to learn some lessons now he ran and worshiped him i ask you again does satan know that jesus is lord he's about to negotiate a deal because when he saw jesus he knew that means every time demons see people who understand their authority they know he saw jesus and he knew and he came and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high look at that kind of intelligence i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not do you know what this means I use the father's authority that you submit to to plead with you I know you are obedient to the father and remember he's kind and he's loving don't torment us look at Satan for Jesus had said come out of the man thou unclean spirit now I love Jesus and he asked him what is your name and the man answered saying my name is legion for we are many and he besought him much that he should not send them away from the country are you seeing now territorial construct of these spirits that means okay since we are going to leave the man it looks like that negotiation is not working please do us a favor can you command that we just come out of him and look for someone within the territory because based on our structure this is our territory verse 11 now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding and the devils besought him and said i will teach you why demons want bodies send us into the swine that we may enter into them do you know what lesson hold on please go back go back go back to verse 12. How many of you know that Gadara had so many human beings and yet the demons are begging it took us a long time to prepare this body to host us I thought they would leave and just enter anybody Satan does not have that kind of power 
to just enter anyhow it takes a lot there are processes he's telling them that even though there are men as it is right now the urgency of wanting a body when are we going to meet a man deceive him manipulate him until we gain entrance let us go to peaks why will satan have men scattered in the in the decapolis and yet look for one man because there are rules of engagement i told you even jesus knocks to enter your life so when you see it look like satan can just get into any life anyhow it is a lie from adam and eve and from this madman the demons are pleading we want to leave but there are rules of engagement we are not just going to enter anybody and remember these guys that he's afraid of entering are not born again because jesus had not died and yet he still could not enter them send us to peaks that we may enter into them 13 and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep can you see that exactly what was happening to the man before was now happening to the pigs so it was not the bodies it was the influences that was behind it are we together now the bible says they ran down to a steep place there were about two thousand look at how that man was suffering what came out from him entered two thousand peaks and all of them could not control themselves yet one man was carrying that imagine the pain that that man was going through let's finish we're reading to 16 14 now verse 14 and they that fed the swine and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what was that that was done verse 15 and when they come to jesus they see that the man who was possessed with the devil and had a legion they saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind we discussed that last week that immediately after the deliverance you thought the man would go away but the next thing that happened after deliverance was that he was with jesus he did not leave Jesus. Next week, we'll be looking at the three levels of deliverance. That number one, the spirit influences were cast. Number two, he was with Jesus. He remained with Jesus. And he sat down there. And his remaining with Jesus was doing something to his mind. His right mind. And they were afraid. Last verse. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil. And also concerning the swine now can a Christian be possessed with demons the answer is no a Christian cannot be possessed with demons the reason is because of the very character of the administration of eternal life that eternal life demands that you are joined to Christ and the Bible says he that is joined to Christ is one spirit but this is the balance just because a christian cannot be possessed does not mean satan does not have an activity that a believer can be a victim of the first two that i listed witchcraft and manipulation and control it does not matter how born again that believer is the cure for witchcraft and the cure for manipulation and control is not just being born again it's putting on the whole armor of god I will teach you that one are you seeing now there are many many believers that are saved and yet will be victims of this why Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened not having their salvation lost having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a Christian cannot be possessed but he can be demonized manipulated and controlled at the solical realm absolutely here is where we need to balance in the body of Christ and most of you know that I love the body of Christ I'm sent to the body of Christ but 
let us not give the devil the authorization to pray on our ignorance satan came to jesus holy jesus righteous jesus blameless jesus he came to him spoke with him it took it is written it did not take jesus being the word to be saved it didn't take jesus being born of the word to be saved from that deception it took him having knowledge and replying back it is written and get thee behind me two things that saved jesus it is written and get thee behind me understanding of scripture and understanding of authority are we learning now so the whole idea that just because you are saved automatically satan has nothing to do with your life it's a lie it's not true i can tell you by the authority of scripture it is not true the disciples the apostles they continue to tell you how that Satan would come and attempt to challenge them, challenge their minds, challenge their body, and they continue to stand with the operation of the word of God. When Jesus entered the temple and preached and rebuked spirits, the people did not show any evidence that they had any spirit at work in them. It was when he gave the command. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. three levels of satanic influences witchcraft through deception manipulation and control largely in the realm of your mind and then complete possession influencing your spirit influencing your mind and influencing your body now having put down all of these things in our discussion what then is deliverance what is deliverance Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. What exactly is deliverance? And the Lord said, Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Please read verse 8 with me. Ready? Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites i am come down to deliver them take note to take them out and to bring them in to take them out and to bring them in scripture number two colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14. colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins recall that i've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of god and man number one there is the prophetic dimension realities from god's standpoint that every time god speaks he speaks from a realm that is finished and number two there is the experiential manifestation of that which god intended happening in time two dimensions when you read the bible you will see god establish certain things for instance none shall say in zion i am sick for instance we've been delivered not we have been not there is deliverance going on we are delivered it is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest are we together now you have to understand this write this down please what is deliverance i was going through the notes that i made last time i was doing mystery of deliverance and i saw this definition i worked on it a bit but it's a powerful definition listen carefully generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom 
from bondage danger and evil generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking this is just a general idea the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance also means salvation deliverance also means salvation generally speaking deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger evil let me define deliverance proper now deliverance i wrote here is the scriptural strategy deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing i will take it very slowly because i don't want you to miss anything here as long as it is obtain grace to write it there is victory in that sentence are we together deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ let me stop there so you write deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces come on over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer if we are together say amen now listen as I read it without breaking. You've been writing. I want you to hear now. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Write this down deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare please don't be tired of writing deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing on the line establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it second Corinthians 2 and verse 4 that means deliverance and then it extends to spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory is engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ do you understand this now it's important to get this definition it will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan. So you are not sure whether you win. You just fight and watch as it happens. That is not scriptural. 
that will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated for the believer our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan over demons principalities and powers hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you